now it's time for our tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys what I actually do on a daily basis after I've actually washed my face. I've washed my face with the Adobe cleanser, which I'll show you guys. This is right here, and I keep it here. Okay? That's the Adobe cleanser. And then what I do is I'm actually reaching to the side of me. After I'm done with the Adobe cleanser, I follow it up with my mineral facial toner. Now, this is the one that doesn't have the alcohol in it. It's called Panic. <laughs> We're still almost 100% vegan. So, those are those two. So, this is very easy. I don't use a mineral veil or anything, and I don't put on my foundation until afterwards. And sometimes I don't even put on my foundation because of the fact that I have ish skin issues, which is one of my skin issues today. So, we're not going to be using that. But what I do use is for my primer, because of course, I have my two boxes here, which you can't see off camera. They're below me. Now, I have two kinds of actual primer. Um, I have the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which is that. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't even know if it's upside down. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Urban Decay's Primer Potion. And this is the purple one. And of course, it's got eyeliner on my fingers, <laughs> which means my eyeliner opened again. But this is the Urban Decay, and this is the eyeshadow primer potion, which was kind of cool. And it has the UD on it. This was the first one that I use sometimes. Then, of course, I have one that I actually use religiously, and I wanted you guys to check this out. And this is the e.l.f. Glitter Primer. Now, this stuff is tacky. Um, really sticky, and it kind of has that, you know, that shape there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really neat looking, and I thought you guys would like to check that out. Now, I got this at the Dollar Tree. It's usually in like two bucks, and just so you guys know, um, Elf Cosmetics is doing a sale right now, so anything you guys kind of get, um, it's free shipping. I think it was for 24 hours or something like that. I'm not sure. So this is what I use, and as you guys can tell, I've kind of got these bags here. Yeah, I'm carrying my luggage with me today. I did get enough sleep. I don't know what it is, but it seems like the camera views from, like, this side and this side are totally different, so it's darker when I'm on this side and, yeah, to where I'm on that side. Here's the thing. I'm not attaching you <laughs> to the mirror anymore, which is behind me. This way I can do my tutorials. You guys are actually attached to my towel rack, which is right behind where you guys are. See, I'll go do you. And that's where that is. This way I can do the tutorials and the reviews, and I don't have to hold you no more. I know, you're going to miss the hugs, but sorry, guys. <laughs> and this thing is actually pretty great. Um, it twists 360 and moves, and the head moves, and it clips onto anything desk, blah, 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 you know? So, with that said, I want to show you guys how I've been doing my makeup, and of course I've got my Wing Goss brushes. Um, I've got two of his, actually, and one of them is a blender, and it's his um, V-tipped one, which is really, really amazing for blending. I don't know how he came up with that, but I love it. And then, of course, I have my other brushes for, like, just patting on my eyeshadow, which one of them is supposed to be for just... Uh, pulling your eyeshadow in, but I kind of don't use it for that. I mean, you use your brushes how you want. Just as long as you're not rough with your brushes, it doesn't matter. So, this is what you're going to start with, and you're going to start with a good primer. I mean, I use the e.l.f. glitter primer. You can use the Urban Decay. You can use whichever one is best for you. Two Faced has come out with it, Urban Decay, e.l.f. Cosmetics. I think there are so so many primers. It's just up to you. I have oily lids, so I use the e.l.f. I'm sure there's another product. Um, a lot of YouTubers use different ones, and it's just, I guess, your personal preference on what works best for you. So this is supposed to be easy application, and it's really not because of the fact that the hole on the end, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the hole on the end is kind of huge, <laughs> and what it does is it kind of smears it or at least it's supposed to smear it. What happens is you get globs, so you have to kind of do it with your fingers. I would suggest you wash your, you wash your hands first before you start this tutorial. 
Um, you can pause it at any time if I'm going too fast. But I figure let's get started. And the first thing you are going to need is your primer that you are going to use. I don't mean your base. I mean your primer. There are two different things. Your base is the coloring after your primer that you're going to apply before you apply your color. Um, it can be a dark color, a light color, glitter, what have you. This is a primer. This gets your eyes ready for that base or that color after. So you can use this yourself as a base, what have you. I mean, I have no problems with it. This is all I use. Sometimes I'll use a Maybelline Tattoo color if I want my eyes really brighter. I mean, it's your personal preference on what you want. So I'm going to show you guys how to use this primer. And this is, like I said, the e.l.f. glitter primer. And this is really easy. And what you do is you sit there and you're supposed to squeeze a little out. And you're supposed to run it across your eyelid when you squeeze a little bit out. And I like to put it just a little bit at the top there. And I don't know if you guys can see this really clear, so I'll probably have to get up close. And it's not, see my eyebrow line is right here. And my eyebrows are not, you know, not filled in. I've kind of got a gap there, and I don't know where that came from, but I'm not too worried about it. I mean, there's nothing an eyebrow pencil couldn't cure. I just don't have one. And I'm not really overly concerned about it. Because once the makeup is done, it shadows my eyes enough to where it just doesn't matter anymore. So I've done this eye, and I'm also going to do the other eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and squeeze, it's being difficult, a little bit out. And I am going to put it on this eye. And I just squeeze it a little as I go, because if I don't, I'll make a clumpy mess, like I just did. <laughs> I don't understand why some of these products have this tip that you can use and then you end up going back with your fingers because it just makes a mess. <laughs> so now that I've got my primer on well, as best as I can here because it's just fighting me today. You ever have one of those days where everything just fights you? Okay, so now I've got my primer on. I don't know if you guys can really see that. I mean, this side is just fighting me today. Okay, now I've got my primer on. Now, just make sure you put your lid on your primer because if you don't, it will dry out. The second step that I do, which is really, really easy, is you pick out your eyeshadow. Now, I've got eyeshadows like LA Colors. I've got their Loose Pigments. I've got their palettes, which as you can tell, I like the purple. Purple is my favorite color, at least one of them. And then, of course, I've got the blues for day and night, which the little plastic thing keeps falling out of. <laughs> and then I've got my actual chocolate bar from Too Faced. This is the original chocolate. This is not the semi-sweet. This is the original chocolate. And I have a problem with it, even though it's my holy grail to go to because I love the smell of it. Um... <laughs> Here's the problem, okay? I don't know if you guys can see how it's pulling away at the top, and I'm holding the mirror so you guys don't, you know, get blinded. But it, you see it's pulling away from the top. Now, the other day I went to open the chocolate bar, and the mirror part of it that I just showed you fell forward. Don't know. Not sure about that, but it's been a while since I actually got it, and we did a review. Just to let you know, that does happen. I don't know if anybody else has experienced it, but now it's just like, uh. And, of course, it's kind of the strangest thing is it wants to fall in again, and I'm kind of pushing it back so it doesn't. But you want to pick out your eyeshadow color. This is real simple. Whatever color you're interested in that day, it doesn't have to be from Too Faced. It doesn't have to be from LA Colors. You can get stuff at the dollar store. It's really cheap. That works just as good. Just remember, you will have fallout with any of the colors that you use, so be very careful. I mean, you could put your V tape for your eyes. That's not a big deal. It's not a huge deal, except for the fallout just goes a little bit beyond, 
that's why I say do not put on your foundation until afterwards. This way you can clean up with any toner that you have or makeup remover and then go back and do your foundation. So here's the simple thing is I'm reaching beside me on the right hand side where I have all my brushes. And I have quite a few brushes here, which I'm going to show you guys, which is kind of funny because um, these brushes um, are, some of them I use and some of them I don't. Now, <laughs> the first one I'm going to show you is the Gossamer brush, okay? Now, that is kind of cool, isn't it? It's got that V-tip on it, and it's tight. This brush has been with me since, <laughs> since it was given to me for free. It was sent in the mail. Don't know who sent it. Whoever sent it when I was in another state, in my home state where I was born, thank you. <laughs> I don't know who sent it because there was no return address and there was no name. So, that was a true gift. Then, in the mail, the same, the same day, came this other brush. Okay? And as you can tell, it needs to be cleaned. A little better. <laughs> and it's actually starting, it really needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Yikes. Um, I'm probably going to have to clean this before I use it again. I'm going to drop it in my solution of baby shampoo and water. And this is a actual concealer brush. And it's an angled concealer brush and it angles that way or you can hold it this way and angles that way. And as you can see, it's starting to fray because of how dirty it is. This is an actual white brush with black hairs, which is another one of the Gossamer brushes, the original. He keeps changing his brushes, so wouldn't be surprised if you didn't find it in his stuff. But yes, that is another Gossamer brush that came in the mail to me. Um, I still don't know who sent these, but thank you to wherever you are. Now, I'm reaching for the other brushes because I put them down. This one, this is an eye concealer, um, cream eyeliner or cream eye color, and then concealer brush. And this one's by Mary Kay, believe it or not. And that's that. Then we have the Garden... Bontica Fluff Brush. I guess this is a blending brush. I've never used it. It's kind of rounded at the top, and I really haven't used this one, so I don't know much about it. And then, of course, I have the Large Shadow Brush. This is by Elf Cosmetics. This is their black line. And then, of course, I have the Angle, the angle Eyeshadow Brush, which you can also use for um, your liner and stuff like that, and that's the Angled. Now, what you want to do is you want to choose two of your favorites. Now, I always choose the Gossamer Blender. And then, of course, I choose a brush to which I am going to sit there and put my eyeshadow on. So after you choose which color eyeshadow you're going to be using, you want to choose your brushes. And these two are easy. You just want a large shadow brush and you want something that has hard bristles so you can blend. And then you choose your colors. Now... You want a dark at the end here, okay, and in your crease. Then you want a lighter color on your eyelid and towards your eye duct. The reason for that is it just makes your eyes open up. See, as you can tell, I've got slightly hooded eyes, and I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, when I'm looking away from the camera, they are mostly hooded and you've only got this little tiny line here. What I want to do is I want to brighten my eye and make it pop so it's kind of like this instead of like this. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to choose your dark shadows, uh, browns, purples, reds. Anything dark is going to go in that area. And you don't want to go too far out here. You want to stay actually at the line. And I'm going to move in a little bit so you can see it. You want to stay at the end of your eye. So you could take a piece of tape and put it there or um, anything for that matter that will be there. And that's the kind of the end of my eye right there, which is where, as you can tell, my brows stop. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm wearing a brown shirt today and a blue cap. Um, the blue cap is so my scarf will stay when I tie it up to keep my hair up and to keep my head warm. So, <laughs> in the summertime, it's to keep the sweat off of me and off of the back of my neck and save my hairstyles and what have you. I mean, people wear it for multiple purposes. I mean, what you do is what you do. What I do is what I do. We all look happily ever after. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a shadow. Now, with the palette, and I'm sorry if I just blinded you guys, but you can choose the dark colors. I mean, any dark color is going to work. You don't necessarily have to choose what I do. I mean, these are browns and dark purples and dark reds, so it really doesn't matter which one you use. It just matters the dark. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, and I'm, everybody's been commenting about this, and I wish they had it, but they have it on this, like, plastic thing. So, I'm going to put the plastic back so I know which ones that I'm using. And I think today I'm going to use the one called Amaretto. And Amaretto is like this dark, shimmery red. And I'm going to try, and it's that color right there. I don't know if you guys could see that really well, but it's really shimmery. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to use that. So I'm going to take the large eyeshadow brush, and I'm just going to lightly wiggle it back and forth in that shadow. And it has extra on it, which I blow off a little bit. And then I'm going to go in, and at the end of my eye, okay, I'm going to set the brush. So that sets that color right there, okay? As you can see, that was 100% easy, no big, huge thing. Then what you want to do is you want to go wiggle back into the color. And I mean, when I'm not wiggling it harsh, we're just wiggling it back and forth like this, okay? Once you do that, you blow on it lightly, and then you go to the other side. And you just place it at the end of your eye, okay? And you tap if you need to, okay? Then you go back into it one more time and blow it off. And then you want to take and bring that shadow up a little bit and above your crease line, okay? Now, if you go too overboard, you can clean it up. It's not a big deal. Uh, a little toner or eyeshadow uh, makeup remover will take care of that. You go back into the color again and blow on it. Not too harshly. You don't want to take all the pigment off of it. So you wiggle it back and forth. You blow on it. You put it a little bit above your crease line, okay, by tapping it, not too hard, and you just bring it in, okay? And yes, this actually causes a blending sensation on the brush, but you're not pushing it and crunching it all the way over. And if you have any eyeshadow left, which you will, you could sit there and even up your lines, and it's not a big deal. And I mean, most people don't explain it, but I'm actually going up and then dragging or actually lightly touching the brush to my eye and bringing it down towards the corner. So you want it from here and downward. So it makes kind of a uh, half opal and it's not covering the whole eye. It does go down into your crease at the end. Don't go all the way to your duct because you'll reclose your eye. And you want to make sure you do that on both sides. And whatever else you have left over, you just want to wiggle it back and forth. Don't push your brush. You don't want to spread out the brush fibers. Because you can ruin your brushes, and that's how you ruin your brushes. Do that. Don't do it too hard. And then, of course, I use the same brush for the dark to the light. So off camera, I do have a towel that I use for cleaning. And then you want to pick your lighter color. Now, that is a reddish. Now I have another darker red, which I can use over this. I prefer not to. I mean, it's up to you if you want it darker than this, if you want it lighter than this. Then I take my lighter color. And this is champagne truffle, which 
trying not to blind you guys, but that is champagne truffle right there. Oh, sorry, right there. And what you want to do is you want to take it and you put your brush and lightly move it back and forth that it barely moves the bristles. And it comes up that color. Okay. Now, champagne truffle is really, really nice and it gives a really, really white color to your eyes. So it makes your eyes really pop. Make sure to blow on your brush. Not harsh, Joe. Because I just blew all the pigment right off my, my brush. Okay? That doesn't work. Now the air smells like chocolate. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to cover the bristles and lightly blow. So, you still have your pigment. And then, you want to take this powder and as close to the dark, without going over it, you want to just touch. Okay? And that's going to be your blending white. Now, as you can see, I do bring it up to the end there, okay, where your waterline duct is, where your duct for your tears, the top, I touch here. Now, there's a reason for that, because I don't want to go in with another actual color. And as you can see, all of a sudden, my eye got bigger. My eye is bigger here than it is here. You want to do that on both sides. So I'm going to go back in, lightly blow it off, and we'll go back in on this eye. And it is just on the lid itself, as close to that color as possible, and bring it over into your duct and up. Now, when you're blending, you'll understand when we pull out the other blending brush, always have two brushes on hand, one that you're going to pat your eyeshadow on with, and one you're going to blend it out with. Now, as you can see, that really makes my eyes big. It's a total difference from what you saw before to what you see now. Now, make sure to clean off your brushes as you go. I don't always do that with my foundation brush. Um, I have a set time to clean them, and that is three times a week I do clean my brushes. That's up to you. That's this brush. Now, the Cisto Resistance, the Gossamer brush, the angled. Okay? What you want to do is my eyes are so hooded that now you can actually see my eyes. I mean, I'm not doing anything extravagant with them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush and get rid of any harsh lines. And I mean harsh lines that look like it's not blending. And as you can see, I'm actually closing my eye. Now, most people can do it this way. I really can't. <laughs> Professional makeup artists say, don't pull your eyes, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> Look. I'm in my 30s, and I have lines above my eyes as well as below my eyes, and there's nothing I can do for it now. But I do want this to where it doesn't look caked. So what I'm going to do is where that line is, where I'd made that line and brought it over, I'm going to put my finger and pull out just a bit. Okay, so as you can see, it smoothens out. And I'll get closer so you guys can see this. Okay. I put my finger here and pull out a bit. And now I can blend in my color. Now, what I'm doing is I'm blending in the white into the dark. Okay, so it lightens up that end area, not all the way, because you really, really, really don't want to take out that dark color at the end. If you start taking out that dark color, you can move your shadow in, and you really want to go back and bring that shadow in, the darker color. I mean, if you need to pull your eye just a little bit more so you can blend it without messing up your brush, Go for it. I mean, there's really no rules to make up except for the sky's the limit. And that's that. Now, you may get a little fallout, and I usually do if I put too much on, and you get it right under here. You can clean that up. It's not a big deal. And as you can see, that eye is actually now wider. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it on the same side, and 
from the tear duct, I put my finger here, and I pull a little bit, and then I just sit there and I go back and forth, not hard, with the brush and up. And I'm not moving my bristles on the brush. Okay. And if my finger slips, I go back in and I just bring the dark in. And then, of course, if you have issues with blending the colors, all you have to do is wipe off your brush and blend it in more. Now, with the Too Faced Cosmetics, for some reason, the color gets brighter as you blend it. I don't know what causes this, but yes, it does. The white actually gets brighter. I mean, if you blended it too much on this side and haven't blended it enough on the other side, I mean, you can go back in and blend it. It's no big deal. Or you can add more shadow to it. I mean, I have no issues with it at all. And I'm not really pushing on my brush. I'm not smooshing it into my skin. I'm not really moving my skin with it. I am moving the shadow. And I am moving it towards my eye. So it actually gives that shaded structure to my eyes. And of course, I want to blend out the dark more here. And that's my eyeshadow. Now, I mean, you can go back in, clean up your lines if you want. I don't always clean up my lines, but you can. You can take a cotton swab and even up your lines, yada, yada, yada. You can put more white in here if you need more white in here. And you've already got your tear duct done. Now, here's the cool thing. And I wanted to show you guys this because I've done it a couple times, and I've gotten the eyeshadow down here, but I've gotten it a little too far or not enough. Now, you can sit there, and you can only do this with the Gossamer brushes. And I've noticed that, and it's only with the ones that have the angle uh, rounded top to it. Okay? You take it, and you don't necessarily have to pull your eye out, although I like to so I don't poke myself in the eye. What you do is you go where the tear duct is, and you just sit there and you fluff it out. Now, what I mean by fluffing it out is you pull it in towards the eye itself. Okay? This way, it actually blends it a little more, so it looks a little bit more natural instead of going whoosh at you. And you want to do that to both sides. And I'm just kind of, it's kind of like a padding motion when you're doing it. And that is that. Okay. Now, my eyes seem wider. Here's the cool thing. I like putting a dark liner on or something like that. So remember, when you're doing the lines here, you're going to want to use a liquid liner. Now, I've got two of my favorites, which are sitting here, and I'm going to show you them. One is the liquid liner from e.l.f., okay? And, which, hey, <laughs> okay. You can't find it. But I also use the pencil, and that's a base. That's kind of like a pearly white. And as you can tell, it's actually smeared because it was heat, and I forgot to put it in a cool place. And then you have that line for the liner underneath. Now, that's if I want to really make my white pop. I don't today. So I also found my LA Colors liquid liner. Now, I like this to a certain point. Be warned, it does flake, it does come off, so don't touch your eyes. And even if you don't touch your eyes, you will get flakes. That's that one. That's the LA Colors Black Liquid Liner. And that is about 0.22 fluid ounces. The only reason I like it is because of the brush. I like the fine brushes. Most people don't like the fine brushes, and that's really a fine tip. And then I like which is kind of weird because I'm like a glitter fanatic. Anything that's pearl or glitter is my thing. I've got Mary Kay at play. And this is their green, and it is called the Real Teal. And that's that. And then that's my favorite color by Mary Kay. Okay. 
And what you do is you take this, and I'm going to use this today. Even though I have a dark color, I want my eyes to stand out immediately. So what you're going to do is that's the brush, and you're going to take this. And I'm not doing this on camera. Doing it in person is easier than doing it on camera. So what you want to do is you want to take it, and you want to dab. Now, most people actually sit there and run their liner across. I have issues. I can't do that. <laughs> I actually sit there and tap my liner, okay? And I have such beautiful lashes at the end of my eye that I have to kind of turn my liner to the end. And this has enough product on it that I might get away with doing it on this side as well. I highly doubt it. I never do. <laughs> but I'm only touching it at the end, right at my lash line, okay? Then what you want to do is, I know everybody likes these beautiful lines at the end here. So what I'm going to do is, I have issues with my long lashes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back on camera so you guys can see this. Oops, sorry, wiggled you. <laughs> And I'm going to lift my eye and put a line right at the end of my eye, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that. There is a line there, okay? And now I'm going to do the same on this side. At the end of my eye has a line don't know if you guys can see that. Now, this is where it gets difficult for me. I don't know if you guys have ever had this problem. Evening these lines. These lines are, look even to me. They may not look even to you. So, what I want to do is I want to take that line at the end and bring it down. So it comes just a little tiny V. And I want to do that on the same, the opposite side. So. There. Very simple. It gives an optical illusion of your eyes being bigger. Now. I have an issue with the under because I don't like putting eyeshadow all the way to here or liner because of how small my eyes are. But what I will do is I will highlight it. Now you saw that teal, but I also have a green. And this is Maybelline. And these were at the Dollar Tree. And these are kind of cool because it has a, a sponge end there. And then it has a roll-up. Now these are supposed to be, they say these are Master Smoky Eye Studio. What I like to do with these is actually use them as a liner, which is kind of comical because most people don't use them as a liner. They use them for smoky eye and stuff like that. But what I like to do is go down by the end of my eye here, by the waterline, and only bring it in halfway. So I'm touching very, very lightly at the lash line from the end of my eye, and I'm bringing it in. And I want to do that on both sides. Now, if you mess up, you can go back with a Q-tip. It's not a huge deal. I always mess up. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to bring it all the way to the end, okay? Where your white stops is where you bring it up to, okay? And that's how that looks. So, that is Maybelline New York. And that is the eye studio. And this is called Emerald Fury. I don't know if you guys can see that. But that's Emerald Fury. Okay. And that's by Maybelline. And that's the Master Smoky Collection. Now, you want to go back and take the end of it and just run it right across it. So it kind of smokes it out a bit and blends it out and doesn't leave any lines in between. And you do that on both eyes. Please don't drag it down or you'll look like you have raccoon eyes. 
like somebody popped you a shot and there's that now for your lips depending on if you're lining them or not that's up to you I prefer sometimes to line them and sometimes not but I am going to sit there and I am going to give you a color formation. Now, most people don't do this. I do. And this is the OOC Lip Tars. Okay. And remember, a little bit goes a long way. What you want to do is at the back of your hand, and that was way too much, is you want to put a little bit of it. And this color is, oh, goodness, this is a metallic, and it doesn't actually, oh, it's called Hollywood. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that there, but that's called Hollywood, and that is like um, a, a goldish color, okay? And then I want to take my lip tar, and this is Black Metal Dahlia, okay? And this is really a dark, rich red, and I really think that I put exactly too much of this on the back of my hand. Make sure you use a clean hand when you do this, and you really want the tiniest, tiniest bit. Okay, that might even be too much for what I'm doing, too. But you put it right together. Do not mix them while you're doing it. Then, thank you to OCC for actually putting a brush in all of their lip tars. And what you want to do is you want to take these two colors and you want to mix them. Okay? And you, the reason I'm saying mix them on the back of your hand is so... The color is not so strong. I mean, it makes it into a mauve color, and I will show you this once I'm done mixing it. It is actually a mauve color, and it's really kind of cool looking. I mean, it's not too dark, not too light, and it really comes out, I mean, on camera, it's 10 times darker, but it's really a light, light color. Um, it's not too light. It's more of a mauve um, wine color. So what you do is you take this, and you start at, you Cupid's bow. Now I have a real defined, I don't know if you guys can see that, a real defined Cupid's bow. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to define it more. So I'm going to go at the tip, one tip of the Cupid's bow, and then I'm going to take a little bit more product and start it at the other side. And then I want to bring the two Cupid's bows to me. Okay, right in center, and then drag your product down from there. And then fill in your lips. And then, what you want to do is the bottom. Same way. You do not go over your line. You mean you have your lip line, okay, which is really light, and then you have the dark. Now, what you want to do is you want to fill in the dark and go towards the light. And I mean, you can use any, like I said, you can use any colors you want. But this is just a diagram of how to apply your makeup really, really fast without tape, how to do it, how to do your lips. I mean, you can use any color. I mean, if you want bigger lips, you can define them out more. I don't. My lips are perfectly fine. I think I'm beautiful the way I am. I like my lips. I do like my facial features. I mean, some people don't. They want bigger lips. They want a bigger cupid spell. I was born with mine. I don't have to use anything else. I mean, that's up to you. And just remember, when you are done, okay, with your liner, make sure to clean off your brush because you do not want to transfer this onto another color. So, or put your brush in where it gets icky. That's that. Now, that is about all you need. The next thing you will do is you'll just put on your foundation like you normally do. You'll cut in and do whatever. I'm perfectly fine with this. I am perfectly done. So I close up my stuff. Now, 
I'm going to show you these, and these are kind of cool. These were at Walmart, and I remember them being for like a buck. And these are pencil cases, and this is what I keep my makeup in. I've got all my pencils and stuff in one, and then I've got some of my eyeshadows that I use all the time in it. Now, normally I use mascara, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. When I do, there are only two that I use, and one of them, of course, is from... The Maybelline collection, and I've been using No Falsies. I like it because of the tiny brush. I don't do my bottom lashes. I never do. I've got tiny eyes. All it's going to do is close my eyes, and I just did all that work to open them, so I'm not going to do that. However, I can use the top since my brows are so dark. I can use it there, fill it in if I need to. I don't. The other one is the Adovia, and the Adovia looks like this. Okay, this is not waterproof, guys, so be forewarned, if it starts raining, you're in trouble. <laughs> this is the brush from Adobe, okay? And I'm going to show you this, guys, because this is kind of cool, okay? It's a standard brush, but it's really, really fluffy, and what you do is, I know we have issues pulling product out. Now, this brush, actually, when you pull out the product, it cleans out the bristles except for the ends which no big deal i mean you could pop it back in just a little bit and take the mascara off and then here's the thing i have been seeing people do this all wrong and there is hardly any product on here that's the reason why i like the adobe i will be saving the brush and probably using it in another mascara uh before i reorder from them so that's that now what you want to do is i want to get close enough so you guys can see this is you put it at the base of your lashes towards your eye and then you just wiggle forward and pull okay and I do that with all of my lashes and because this really doesn't have a lot of product on it it doesn't clump and I mean I just hit myself here and it made only a little tiny mark because there's not a lot of product on here. That's the one thing I like about their products. And like I said, you put it at the base of your lashes. Don't poke yourself in the eye and wiggle it as you pull up. Okay? If you need more, you can go back in, get more. I refuse to. I think this is more than enough product on this brush to do both. And now if you want to get the little hairs in the corners, you can. I mean, that's all up to you. How you would like your daytime to evening look. And that's it. And there you have it. That is so easy. Take your favorite mascara. If you have an issue with your mascara, that clumps. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Wayne's, but I know you guys are always watching me. And you're trying to figure out how I do my makeup day for day. Now, with the Maybelline, it does clump. But here's the thing. Get yourself a pack of baby wipes. Any baby wipes you want. Just make sure they don't have alcohol in them. And make sure they don't have a fragrance in them. And make sure they don't have aloe in them. So, vegan ones are great. Um, you can make your own. That's great, too. What you want to do is, because... I'm going to show you this, and this is kind of weird, and, but that, right there. You see how much mascara is on that brush? I mean, oh, goodness, that is just crazy. No, I will not put that to my eye. Not until I use the baby wipe and clean some of that gunk off there, and then I might go back in and take a little bit off, um, but... That's what it does. Anyway, that's that. <clears throat> this is my normal day that I use for my eyeshadow and my lipstick and my liner. This is how I do my makeup on a daily routine. This is how I've been doing it for the last couple of months, um, which you guys have seen pictures, et cetera, et cetera, on my social media. And I figured I'd give you guys a tutorial before you start asking me how to do it because everybody seems to be liking it. Um, and that's it. Uh, also, before I forget, 
if you put on too much lip tar, okay, there is a way to take it off. In the old days, we used to use tissue, blot your lips, that's fine. That's all you need to do. Please don't rub it. It will come off. OOC and the other lip tars do have a habit of coming off if you rub. And if all else fails, if you want to change your makeup during the day, um, you can add a black liner over the um, Mary Kay, dress it up a bit, add a few sparkles from Sephora, um, take it off, take it on, make sure you use like baby wipes or makeup removal wipes, um, stuff that isn't going to hurt your eyes. Um, carrying coconut oil defractionated with you is great to help you stop getting red eyes. But that's about it. And that is my tutorial for today. This is my look. Um, this is before I put my scarf on. So, you know, today I have my cute little blue patchwork. Okay. And of course, that be that seam is not centered. What else is there, right? But this, if you guys don't have caps, I mean, you can find them like all over now um, from everywhere, uh, from Christian stores to uh, Muslim stores to, I think, um, JCPenney might have a couple of these, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can also find them in Sally Beauty Supply, but those are the black ones. And all you do is you put it on your head. And it keeps your hair out of your face when you're doing your facials and your makeup. And <laughs> it just keeps everything from getting all over the place. While I'm trying to do my makeup, the last thing I want is my hair in it. Especially when I'm trying to do fine lines. Oh, that is just annoying. But... It also keeps my hair in place in these things. And I'm going to tell you something. And I don't know if you guys know this. For those who do not wear scarves or caps or anything like that, I'm going to give you the heads up. During the summertime, when it's like 100 degrees, 90, 80, you know, 100, something like that, and you're dying of heat, peppermint oil and water. Get one of these caps. I'm telling you, get one of these caps. Soak it in peppermint oil and water. You want three drops of peppermint oil to uh, a cup of water. And you take this cap or any cap that you have and you put it in the container and you soak it with that and you wring it out. And when you put it on your head, I'm telling you, it's built in air conditioning. When I wear this and I do my scarf designs, I mean, I've got the black one that you guys always see. I take that bugger and I put that in peppermint oil and I wring it out real good. I put it on my head and it's like built in air conditioning. It is perfect. You can spray yourself with it in the summertime keeps you cool. It's just worth billions, I'm telling you. Um, but that's it. Now, later I'll be probably wearing a scarf. I don't know which scarf design I'm going to do. You guys know I like the turban designs. I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to do. Yesterday I was wearing a peace sign one. I should have taken a picture for you guys, but I will show you the scarf um, a little bit later. And well, that's about it. Just remember, if you guys are going to decide to wear a scarf, because it keeps your hair off the back of your neck, it keeps you cooler because it is cotton, and you're going to use the peppermint oil, and you don't, you know, your headband is like tiny, 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 which um, I have some little tiny, tiny, tiny ones. That doesn't do anything to keep me cool. This does. So, with that said, it keeps everything out of the way, so you can do your makeup, you can do your facials, you can do your face wash and everything, and it keeps your hair out of the way, and it keeps you cool. So, don't forget, if you're wearing a scarf, please wear something cotton underneath. You will destroy your hair. You will. Uh, don't say you won't. You will. Okay? I've had to cut six to eight layers off of my hair because of it. Um, make sure to wear something cotton underneath it so it doesn't suck the oils out of your hair. Make sure that you oil your hair. Um, I use the Go Pure line, and I'm going to show you guys this. And this is the 100% pure crack. crack fractionated, <laughs> we'll get this out, fractionated coconut oil. And this I use, and as you can tell, yes, I've been using it. And this is from the Go Pure line. This is my favorite coconut oil. This is the fractionated, I use it as massage oil. I actually use it because of my psoriasis. I put this on and I soak my cap in the peppermint oil and then I put that on it and it's like this cooling, tingling fingers kind of thing that goes all through my head and it lasts all day long. And it keeps 
get my hair from drying out because synthetic fabrics and silk happen to pull the moisture out of your hair. Um, cotton pulls the sweat off your head. That's why a lot of times you guys won't ever, ever see me again with my hair, unless I'm doing like uh, a hair review of a hair product, okay? If I'm doing makeup, you're not going to see that. So I figured I'd let you guys know. Um, and that's about it. That's my tutorial and my FYI for you guys. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my social media at the bottom. I always have my links down at the bottom for all of my social media. And I'm hitting things over here, which is kind of my curling iron on the side. Um, and, of course, be good to each other. Stay safe, and I will talk to you guys soon. I love you. Bye.